Hi, this is Kelly Hofer with Theory of Curiosity, and today we are in our beautiful Calgary Public Library. We are going to be talking to you today about your ears and your auditory system and how binaural recordings make use of your auditory system. So you have to put your headphones in. I'm not kidding. Put them in. This is absolutely necessary. So, in the world of audio recording, there are multiple types of recording. So right now you're listening to audio in mono, and you're not able to get any spatial awareness of where sound is coming from. So in stereo, you have two microphones that are crossed and kind of look like this. And stereo is technically just a definition for a number of audio channels, but it can also refer to microphone placement. But with that, you get a bit better sense of width in the recording. However, you don't get the full effect that your ears hear, and you don't get the binaural kind of quality of audio that you get with binaural microphones. And then the binaural audio is a subset of stereo recording where you imitate the spacing of the human ears with your microphone so that you can get the timing difference and the loudness difference that you would get when hearing things in real life. And that allows you to get a more 3D sense of an environment when recording in binaural playback. Before we get into binaural recording, we actually need to figure out how our brains um, conduct sound localization. So there's a lovely system in our brains called the auditory system. The three factors that our auditory system uses to figure out where sound is coming from are distance, where it's located on a horizontal plane, and where it's located on the vertical plane. I'll get into the horizontal plane first because I think it's the easiest to talk, to talk about. So, say a point source sound is coming from the front right of us. Our brain uses something called the intraoral time difference and the intraoral intensity difference of that sound to figure out that it's coming from the front right of us. The intraoral time difference can be explained by how the waves of that sound will hit our right ear before it hits our left ear. It's only milliseconds apart, but your auditory system is so sensitive that it can actually figure out the difference between when it hits the right ear and the left ear and figure out that that means it's coming from the right of us. The other part of it is intraoral intensity difference. The intraoral intensity difference is the difference in volume and frequencies between the right and left ear, given the same point source sound. This happens because of something called attenuation. And the attenuation happens when it goes over this big physical barrier called your head. So what that means is that the waves have to go over this barrier, they'll get cut off, and the higher frequency attributes of it, so the higher notes of it, will get cut off more than the lower notes. That is part of what your brain uses to figure out where the sound is coming from. So that's how your body figures out how it is in front of you. Now behind you, we also have a way of figuring it out, and that's because of the unique conical shape of our ears. So if the sound comes from behind me, it will be attenuated by the shape of my ear. If it comes from in front of me, it will actually be directed into my ear more effectively. So that makes it so that we can figure out if the sound is coming from in front of us and from behind us. So for your brain to figure out how far away something is, it usually takes what we think we already know about the sound and uses that as its kind of baseline. So say I already know what a cat sounds like when it's meowing. And if I hear a cat meowing, but it has less of those high frequency attributes, or it's quieter than usual, then my brain will figure out that it's actually further away, or behind a wall, for example. Um, and actually the loss of those higher frequency attributes is what causes the sound to become muffled. The other way your brain is able to determine the distance of something away from you is through the difference in loudness from ear to ear. So if I go and I whisper, into your left ear, and then I go and stand way back here. When whispering into your left ear, the loudness is a lot greater than in your right ear. But when I'm further away, 
the loudness difference becomes less so. And that ratio in difference in loudness is something that your brain is able to convert into an approximate distance. This loudness difference can be quantified using the inverse square law. On the vertical plane, on the other hand, our body kind of sucks at figuring out where noises are coming from on the vertical plane. To get over this problem, I guess we could say, what we do, and what this cute little dog does as well, is we tilt our heads. So say something is coming from up here, I'm going to tilt my head so I can once again use the intraoral time difference and intraoral intensity difference to figure out where that sound is coming from. This head tilting thing actually comes really, really naturally to us. We don't even think we don't even think we're doing it, but we are all the time. Without tilting our head, the only things that our brain has to figure out where sound is coming from on the vertical plane is the unique shape of our upper body. So my brain has been trained to figure out how sound waves bounce off my shoulders, off of my chest, and off of my head and ears. So the outside shape of my ears, or pinna, is very unique. And it actually changes how sound is presented to my brain and to my auditory system before it even gets to my brain. So my experience of sound and your experience of sound is incredibly unique and it can't actually be transferred to anybody else, really. So binaural, which is a subtype of stereo recording, it mimics the location of your ear microphones basically, so that when listening to a binaural recording, you are able to use your auditory system to do the same type of sound localization as you do with your ears naturally. And unlike surround sound systems, which can only give you like five or so positions of things in a soundscape, binaural recording has almost an infinite number of positions because it's using a timing difference and a loudness difference to bring across those qualities in the recording. So the natural progression after you go from stereo to binaural recording might be hyperbinaural recording, which is kind of similar to how an elephant might hear. And what you do with hyperbinaural recording is you move the microphones to even further apart so that the intraoral time difference and the intraoral loudness difference is amplified in what you can hear um, because you're looking at it with a wider stereo vision, I guess. And the one unique thing about binaural audio is that for the recordings that we do where we put microphones into our ears, the recording that we get will sound very different for every person that does it because we have so much diversity in body shape. Oh, I'm sorry. 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 I'm sor